the last thing that we want to do with the chain rule is start to use it in some applied examples. Instead of introducing a new applied example, I decided to use the exact same example that we did in the last section over higher order derivatives. So let's go back to that example. It's where we introduced an oral painkiller to a patient, and we talked about the concentration of the drug in the patient's bloodstream, and it was given by this function here. We, in A, computed the first derivative, or the rate of the concentration in the drug of the patient's bloodstream. And then in part B, we computed the second derivative, the rate of the rate. Now, we don't need to recompute part A. I just copied that over from the last section. We took the derivative of it using the quotient rule, and we got these values here. The problem was when we came to the second derivative, we had to do a lot of work. So when we did that, we talked about three different versions of the first derivative. We talked about the version where I didn't have anything in the numerator factored, but the denominator was completely factored. I also talked about a version where my numerator was factored along with the factored version of my denominator. But then I had to do a third version where I multiplied out the denominator so when I needed to take the derivative of it, it was easier to do. Well now, since we know the chain rule, when we take the derivative of this piece here, it's going to be easier to leave it in this format rather than multiplying it out. So if we have to take the derivative of this one now with using the chain rule, it should be a lot easier. The derivative is going to be a lot easier, and to simplify it, it's going to be a lot easier. So let's do the derivative of this again, but now we're going to use the chain rule, and of course we should get the same answer that we got without using the chain rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of this again, but I'm going to use this version and only this version here when it is most factored. So that's what I have here. Now we need to take the derivative of it. First things first, I have a constant multiplied, so I'm going to use my constant multiple rule, and I'm going to pull that out to the side, and that's the way that I did it last time as well. I know that I'm going to have negative 5 times the derivative of this here. I have to use my quotient rule, and I have to use my quotient rule before my chain rule because I have two separate pieces. So my quotient rule says the original of the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is 16t, minus the original of the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. And this is where we get to use the chain rule rather than having to FOIL it out. So times, bring my 2 down, keep my inside function the same, subtract a power in my numerator, and then take it times the derivative of this here, which gives me 16t. And that is all over my denominator squared. The reason that this is easier because it keeps it more in factored form, so when I do the next step of factoring it, it's going to be a lot easier to pick out my common factors. So I have my two units here, this one here and this one here, to see what they have in common. They both have a 16t in common, and they both have an 8t squared plus 9 in common. So we can take that out. So my negative 5 stays, I take out a 16t, and I take out an 8t squared plus 9. In my first red unit, I'm left with one of those 8t squared plus 9. In my second red unit, I'm left with 2 times 8t squared minus 9. And that is all over this 8t squared plus 9 to the fourth when I multiply my exponents. And you can already see that this is going to be a lot easier. Okay, so I need to multiply this 5 times negative 16, which gives me negative 80. 
This 8t squared plus 9 cancels with them in the denominator, so that tells me that I'm going to have three of them left over in the denominator. And in the numerator, I just need to distribute my negative 2 through here and drop this set of parentheses. So this gives me 8t squared plus 9 minus 16t squared plus 18. And so we get our second derivative, or the derivative of our rate function, is equal to negative 80 times negative 8t squared plus 27 over this 8t squared plus 9 to the third power. Or if I factor a negative out of both of those pieces in the numerator, that tells me my second derivative or my rate derivative is equal to positive 80 times 8t squared minus 27 over this 8t squared plus 9 to the third. And of course, that was the same answer that we got here, but you can see our work was a lot easier. So this is the advantage of using the chain rule if you didn't already figure out what it was at this time. This was the last thing I wanted to cover in this section, so now we have finished all of the examples that I wanted to cover utilizing our last derivative rule, the chain rule.